This video covers basic interaction data tooltips. The structure of this video is as follows. Basic chart scatter plot revisited. Document object model events. D3 selection dot on D3 dot event. Putting it all together. JavaScript console walkthrough and the summary. All right, let's get started. Basic chart scatter plot revisited. We will use the TSV data from the d3js.org website scatterplot example. We will save this data into a file called data.tsv. This file will be located in the folder where we will run the Python simple HTTP server command. This file is the one that will be loaded asynchronously using the d3.tsv request functionality. What we want to be able to do is to hover over any of the points in the scatterplot chart and have a tooltip display the X and Y coordinates. Not just the X and Y coordinates, the X and Y coordinates that match up to the scaled axis. To do this, we will have to learn enough of the very basics of DOM events, DOM selection on, and D3 dot events to get the tooltips to work correctly. Document object model events. Document model object events come in many different shapes and sizes. They can be driven by the mouse, by a touch, by the keyboard, and by a few other different types of specific actions. Because various web browsers had significant differences in implementation and what events they responded to, the document object model event model was standardized by the W3C and DOM level 2. For the purpose of this video, we will only look at a portion of the mouse events. There are many DOM mouse event drivers that are considered mouse events. The main ones are related to clicking and moving the mouse over something. Because browsers can respond to these events, we can write exactly what happens when one of these events occurs. Let's cover the main ones and how they are defined. A mouse click event fires when the mouse button is clicked over an element. A click is defined as a mouse down and mouse up over the same screen location. A mouse double click event fires when the mouse button is double clicked over an element. A click is defined as a mouse down and mouse up over the same screen location. A mouse down event fires when the mouse button is pressed over an element. A mouse up event fires when the mouse button is released over an element. A mouse over event fires when the mouse cursor is moved onto an element. A mouse move event fires when the mouse cursor is moved while over an element. A mouse out event fires when the mouse cursor moves away from an element. To keep things simple, we will only focus on the mouse over and mouse out events, which in the case of the scatterplot chart, we want something to happen when we move the mouse over a point and when we move the mouse away from the point. Now that we know that there are DOM events that the browser can detect, we have to define who we want to be listening to those events as well as what to do when those events happen. D3 selection dot on. The D3 selection dot on method adds an event listener to each element in the current selection. The type is a string of the event type that we want an event listener for. Examples could be mouse down, mouse up, mouse over, mouse out, etc. For our purposes, we will use the mouse over and mouse out as the two types. D3 invokes the listener in the same way it invokes other operator functions by passing the current datum D and index I in the this context as the current DOM element. This example creates a selection of all the SVG circle elements. Then using the D3 selection dot on, it adds a mouse over event listener to each SVG circle. When the mouse goes over one of the SVG circle elements, the anonymous function will be invoked. Currently, it will alert us with the string mouse over. Then using the D3 selection dot on, it adds a mouse out event listener to each SVG circle element. When the mouse leaves one of the SVG circle elements after having been on it, the anonymous function will be invoked. Currently, it will alert us with the string mouse out. As you can imagine, we can also use the index and the data object attached to each circle element. In this example, if the data object had a key of value, then this would return the value of the key value pair. This is very powerful because now we have some interaction with the mouse. 
This is one of the reasons that we have covered before why it's very important to leave the data unchanged when attaching it to DOM elements. Because event interactions can get very complicated quickly with transitions and the duration of the transition, styling, and other functionality, it's often easier to understand if you write named functions elsewhere in the code that the selection.on can reference. So far so good, we are able to attach an event listener to the SVG DOM element. We are also able to specify specific actions slash calculations that must happen when the event is triggered through a JavaScript function. Note that this is the very basics of how this works, and we are hand-waving a great deal of the tricky bits away for now. The thing we are missing is how we generate the tooltip. To do that, we have to cover the d3.event functionality. D3.event. The document object model event, when triggered, has a number of event properties that are helpful in different types of scenarios. Some of these properties include the following. A timestamp of when the event occurred, the horizontal coordinate of the event relative to the whole document, the vertical coordinate of the event relative to the whole document, and other properties that help answer questions like, what is the type of the event? Which HTML element is the target of the event? Which key was pressed during the event? Which mouse button was pressed during the event? What was the mouse position during the event? D3 captures an event when it happens and stores it in the variable D3.event. This is a global variable that can be used in the event listener callback function registered with the D3selection.on operator. After the JavaScript callback function has finished running, the current D3.event is reset. The reason we want to capture the current event is that we can extract the X and Y coordinates of the event. These X and Y coordinates are where the event happened, which means it is where the mouse currently is. This is useful when we are making a tooltip to show the data of a specific element. When the event happens, we can use the X and Y coordinates to create the tooltip in that specific location. So far, so good. The last thing we want to cover is how we can make an element on the HTML page appear and disappear. This is so that the element will appear with the relevant data when we mouse over a point and then disappear when the mouse moves out. Putting it all together. If we run the above two commands in order, the first command will color all of the SVG circle elements a red color. The second command will then color all of the SVG circle elements a blue color. To make an element appear and disappear from the screen, we can use the opacity CSS property. When the opacity property is set to 1, the element is visible. As the opacity property goes to 0, the element will become invisible. Using the mouse over and mouse out functions the event listener uses, we can change the style of the element to hide it using the opacity CSS property. The next thing we want to do is define an HTML div element that we can position absolutely. When you specify position semicolon absolute, the element is placed exactly where you tell it to go in the HTML document. So we can use the d3.event.pageX and d3.event.pageY to place this HTML div element exactly over the circle when we hover over it. This styling is taken and slightly modified from the HTML overlay with pageX slash pageY d3.js.org website example. We use div.html rather than div.text so that we can add an HTML line break into the string that we pass into it. Lastly, we define the mouse over and mouse out functions to change the opacity as well as the location based on the d3.event page x and page y coordinates. In the case of the scatter plot, we'll select all the circles with a class of dot and add the d3 selection dot on mouse over and mouse out event listeners as well as specify what functions should be run when the events are triggered. JavaScript console walkthrough. After downloading the data to a data.tsv file from the scatter plot example, starting the Python simple HTTP server and making sure d3 is loaded, we open the Chrome Developer Tools and go step by step building the visualization. Because we are interested in adding event listeners and their functions, we don't need to run the d3.tsv request separately. 
we copy and paste all the code from the d3js.org scatterplot website example. You can see that it generates the graph correctly because we have the Python simple HTTP server serving the data correctly for the d3.tsv request. First, let's define the HTML div that is going to serve as the tooltip that appears and disappears when a circle is moused over. You can see that the div was appended as the last child element in the body section. The opacity is zero and when we hover over it, it shows up beneath the SVG container in the HTML section of the browser. This is because we haven't defined the coordinates of where it should live. Next, let's define the mouse over function. The style of the left and top will be updated with the relevant d3.event page x and page y coordinates every time a new DOM mouse over event occurs on the circles. Note that the sepal width and sepal length properties are not scaled. The reason they are not scaled is because the axis and the circle dots have been scaled to both match the input data. So the input data does not need to be scaled. Next, let's define the mouse out function. The only thing this function does is to make the opacity CSS property zero. This hides the tooltip while not removing the HTML div from the page. This is helpful because we are not generating a new div for every interaction. We are only moving the HTML div and making it visible or invisible. Finally, we select all the circles with class of dot and add two event listeners. By using the d3.selectAll dot, we are able to add event listeners to every single DOM element with the class of dot. You can see the power that the d3selection.on gives us because we can add all different types of listeners based on the d3 selections that we make. When we enter the command, it returns an array of 150 elements, so we know that all 150 dots now have event listeners attached to them. And with that, the scatter plot now has some interactivity. Let's close the Chrome Developer Tools to get a better look. You can see the full picture. The crucial thing to understand about the basic interaction data tooltips for the scatter plot chart is that anytime you move your mouse anywhere on a web page on a web browser, you are triggering tons of events. If there are no event listeners attached to any DOM elements, then the events fall on deaf ears. If there are event listeners attached to DOM elements, then they will run the code they are supposed to run when events are triggered. D3 provides a very easy way to add event listeners to DOM elements in selections as well as specify what functions should be run when these events are triggered. Though we have barely scratched the surface of the DOM events, D3 event bindings, and what events can happen, the basics of what we have learned here are applicable in the more intermediate and advanced data visualizations constructed with D3. The Summary This video covered basic chart scatter plot revisited, document object model events, D3 selection dot on, D3 dot event, putting it all together, JavaScript console walkthrough, and the summary.